Let's get to Tel Aviv and join Mark White, GB News's security editor, who is there. And Mark, I thought this morning quite a significant moment when one of the leaders of Hamas gave an interview. Yes, this was Ghazi Hamad uh, who was giving a television interview and quite boldly saying that uh, he would and Hamas would continue to attack Israel. There would be more in the way of October 7th type of attacks, blaming Israel for all the wrongs that the Palestinian people have suffered and saying that there can be no peace for the Palestinian people without the destruction of Israel. So we heard it from his own words, a senior Palestinian leader there, clearly not looking for any kind of ceasefire with Israel, but determined to continue that struggle, that fight, that terrorism that we saw on October the 7th. So given that, Israel will argue that they have no choice but to continue to prosecute the war, to go in and to destroy Hamas. And in terms of that war, Nigel, it is very bloody indeed. Uh, fierce fighting right throughout North Gaza. Today, uh, we got word of a 16th Israeli soldier who had been killed during the fighting. There's all the controversy, of course, about the Jabalia refugee camp in North Gaza, which was struck yesterday by missiles, an airstrike that was called in by troops on the ground to take out a Hamas commander and also Hamas infrastructure, including tunnels and weapons storage in that area. Uh, they are absolutely the Israelis adamant that that was a legitimate military target, but because, of course, Hamas has this uh, process of hiding in and amongst the civilian population, then there is always significant civilian casualties. No, you're right, and, and certainly back to the first point, you know, when a senior Hamas official says, we'll go on attacking again and again until Israel is annihilated, um, I would suggest, says to people who think there should be an immediate ceasefire, frankly, there just can't be one. On the war on the ground, uh, the Israeli claim is that they've hit 11,000 Hamas targets, just backing up your point about the intensity of it. Let's just switch to Egypt, if we can, for a moment. Um, as I understand it, in the last couple of hours, some British citizens have been allowed to cross the border at Rafah. But a very interesting point that may push back on debate in this country is the Egyptian Prime Minister saying that basically we're prepared to sacrifice millions of lives to ensure that no one encroaches upon our territory. Very tough words, Mark White. Yes, I mean, it doesn't relate as much to the, the Israeli military as to the thought that the Israeli military is about to force 2.3 million Palestinians out of Gaza and into the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. Israel uh, will not stand for that. Uh, um, Egypt, I should say, yeah. says they will not stand for that. Um, and of course, interestingly, Keir Stammer in his speech yesterday spoke about this very issue, about the concerns that Palestinians have about forced displacement. And he called in his speech for the Israeli government to disavow the Palestinian people of any such notion that they would be pushed out of Gaza and into Egypt, that once the fighting was over, that they would be allowed to return to their homes in Gaza. I don't think as yet Israel has made that clear. No, I think you're right. There is some ambiguity around it, but certainly none coming from the Egyptian prime minister. And what about, just finally, if I may, the situation on the ground in Israel itself today, in particular, rockets coming in from three potential sources. Yeah, we only had uh, two uh, rocket attacks over Tel Aviv today, and we went to the shelter once, uh, as it was in our area. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty much every hour that there are rocket attacks going into 
Israel. A lot of the attacks are aimed at the communities around the Gaza border and really at the IDF troops who are mustering on the Gaza border. But also they're going further afield into Ashkelon and Ashdod, uh, north of Gaza as well. They've still got the capability. The job is not done by any means. And Israel knows that that job on the ground is going to be very long and very bloody. 16 soldiers dead already and they've only begun pushing into these northern suburbs of Gaza. Once they get into Gaza City proper and once of course they have to get down into the tunnel systems, I think the, the number of Israeli casualties is going to grow very significantly. I'm sure that's right. Mark White from Tel Aviv, as ever, thank you very much for that live report.